Hello and welcome to the NPTEL MOOCs course on Design and Implementation of Human Computer Interfaces. We are going to start lecture number 26 where we are going to continue our discussion on testing, particularly we will focus on review based code testing. Before we begin our discussion, let us quickly recap what we have learned, where we are now and what we are going to discuss to put discussion in the proper context. So, we are discussing interactive system development life cycle. In the interactive system development life cycle, there are several stages. Among those stages, we have already covered many of the stages and we are continuing with the remaining stages. So, we have already covered requirement gathering, analysis and specification stage. Then we covered design prototype evaluate cycle and the sub stages that are part of this cycle including design, prototyping and evaluation. Now, these three sub stages are primarily meant for interface design. Also, we have discussed code design. Then we discussed coding and implementation stage where we learned about good coding practices and what we should do and what we should avoid while converting our system design into, uh, into an executable code. Currently, we are discussing the testing stage which is located here. In the testing stage, we have already started our discussion on the basic concepts and we are going to continue that discussion to cover the broad categories of code testing. So, in the testing stage, what we have learned in the previous lectures? Let us have a quick recap. We have learned that there are broadly two groups of approaches which we can employ to test our code. Now, there are two things when we are talking about interactive system development. One is how it is going to be perceived by the user and accepted by the user that is primarily determined by the usability of the design or rather the usability of the system. For ensuring usability, we have already seen that during this design prototype evaluate cycle, we make prototypes and get those evaluated by expert users to know about the usability issues that may be there with the interface design. However, so far we have not talked about the other aspect of a system that is how good the system behaves during execution or rather the efficiency of the code, how well the code is written and how well the system design is implemented. That part we have not discussed so far that comes under the testing phase or code testing phase. Now, there our primary concern is to see that the code is error free. Now, errors can happen at multiple levels. We may think of errors at the syntactic level that means, whether we are following the correct syntax while writing the code using a particular language. We may face errors at the logical or semantics level that is whether there are any logical bugs that are there or that are present in our code. Also, it may happen that we may fail to follow standard coding practices. That is also a kind of important errors or uh, violation of conventions that we should be very careful about. Otherwise, the code that we write will be very difficult to understand by others who may be part of your team. So, that will in turn affect the team work and that is not a good thing when you are part of a complex interactive system development team. To determine syntactic errors, of course, we rely on the compilers. Maybe all of you are aware of that. We have already mentioned this point in the previous lecture. To determine logical errors as well as to determine errors that may happen due to the improper use of convention, 
we take recourse to several methods. Now all these methods can broadly be divided into two groups of methods or two groups of approaches. One is review based testing method and the other one is execution based testing methods. Now review based testing methods are as we have noted in our earlier lectures, quick cost effective way to test your code. Here primarily we try to identify major errors without spending too much time or effort on analyzing the code. In execution based testing method, this is not the case, it is more formal and more rigorous in nature where we mostly focus on analyzing the code internally as well as externally and accordingly we design test cases and then go for testing. That is a more systematic, scientific, rigorous and detailed way of testing. The focus of this lecture is review based testing. As we said, as I mentioned, review based testing is primarily used to quickly identify major issues or major errors in the code so that those can be rectified and we have to spend less effort and time for more formal testing of the code. Now review based testing can be of two types. One is code walkthrough. Now this is similar to the cognitive walkthrough method that we have learned earlier while discussing evaluation of prototypes. What we have discussed there that in cognitive walkthrough, we have a small team of evaluators between 3 to 5 members. Each member is given a use case scenario and they are asked to identify usability issues while trying to use the prototype for the particular use case given. At the end each of them produces a report which the evaluator combines and determines the major usability issues. Code walkthrough is similar in nature as we shall see soon. The other type of review based testing method is code inspection. Now this is again similar to another prototype evaluation method that we mentioned namely heuristic evaluation. So in heuristic evaluation what we did, we have a checklist. So we used Nielsen's 10 heuristics as the checklist and again there will be a small team of evaluators, 3 to 5 members. Each of these members will be given a prototype and the checklist and they will be asked to identify which of the items in the checklist are satisfied in the interface represented as a prototype. Same idea is applied for code testing also which we call code inspection. So conceptually code walkthrough is similar to cognitive walkthrough method of evaluating prototypes and code inspection is similar to heuristic evaluation method of prototype evaluation. Let us briefly try to understand the code walkthrough method, what we do and what we get at the end. So code walkthrough is an informal method for analyzing the code. Here the main objective is to discover algorithmic and logical errors in the code. Remember we mentioned two error types, one is logical error, other one is violation of conventions or standards. In code walkthrough our primary objective is to identify logical errors rather than the violation of standards. However, while performing walkthrough it is also possible to check for violation of standards that can be one of the minor objectives of cognitive walkthrough. 
So, what are the steps for performing code walk through? First thing is we have to have a team, team of evaluators. Now, the team members who can be the part of the development team, each of them is given the code to read and understand. So, we have a team of evaluators who can be part of the development teams and each of them will be given the code and they will be asked to go through the code, read it and understand the code. Next, each of these members is required to select some test cases. Remember, we mentioned what is a test case that is an input output combination input is given to the code and output is generated and then we match this with the predetermined output to see if there is a match otherwise there is some logical error. So, each member is asked to select some test cases and then they are asked to simulate execution of the code by hand. Now, this is a term that should not be taken literally by hand means effectively instead of using the computer to execute they have to do th so manually like the way we calculate something. That means trace execution of the steps in the code through each statement and functional execution. So, given inputs the team members are required to execute the code that means trace the execution of the statements in the code manually and that is what we are calling execution by hand. After the execution for each test case the members are required to note down their findings and discuss in a walk through meeting in the presence of the coders. So, that is what is required at the end of evaluation by each member. So, to repeat there is a team, each team member is given the code, they have to read and understand it, then each team member is expected to come up with some test cases. It is desirable that the test cases are supplied by the coders, but then there is a possibility of biasness. So, ideally it should have been designed by someone who is not part of the coding team and there should be more than one test cases ideally. For each test cases, each member of the evaluation team is expected to hand execute the code and produce output and then match with the desired output and they compile for all the test cases and at the end there will be a meeting where all these findings will be discussed in the presence of the coders. So, that coders know for which inputs there are some errors and they can accordingly rectify those parts of the code. While going for code walk through some guidelines should be followed. First of all, the team or the evaluation team that is performing the walk through should not be either too big or too small. This is similar to the cognitive walk through scenario we discussed earlier. So, ideally 3 to 5 members should be there in the team and the team should not be too big or too small. While choosing test cases, it is desirable that representative test cases are chosen. This is similar to the concept of representative use cases in the case of cognitive walk through. Now, how to determine what is a representative test case? Again, that is not a very easy thing that requires expertise, that requires experience. However, it is desirable that you come up with representative test cases rather than any random test cases. 
Remember in our earlier lecture we mentioned that randomly designed test suits not necessarily serve the purpose of identifying errors in a code. Instead we should be systematically designing test cases. Since code walkthrough is not a very formal method, so here of course we can go for informal way of designing test cases. However, it is desirable to keep in mind while going for test case design that the test cases should be as representative as possible. Also at the end of this team meeting where findings are discussed in the presence of coders, we should keep in mind that during this discussion the focus should be on the discovery of errors and not how to fix errors. Fixing errors will come later. During the discussion it should be focused solely on identifying the errors. So, that is in summary what a code walkthrough method. The other method for review based testing is code inspection method. Let us quickly have a look at what this method is and how it can be utilized to test codes. So, here the aim is to discover some common types of errors that are caused due to oversight and improper programming. For example, uninitialized variables. Also this method is more suitable to check for adherence to the coding standards. So, remember in the earlier case that is code walkthrough method, our primary objective was to identify logical errors. In contrast, in the code inspection method, primary objective is not to identify logical errors, rather identify common mistakes that happen during programming as well as adherence to coding standards whether that is being followed or not. So, the objectives are somewhat different for these two methods, but both provide a quick and cost effective way of identifying or achieving these objectives. So, one thing that we should know is that typically companies collect statistics, several statistics regarding different types of errors that are commonly committed by their engineers and programmers and identify the type of errors that are most frequently committed. So, that is a common practice across industries that these companies generally collect the statistics regarding different types of errors that happen in the programs written by their engineers and the most frequently occurring errors. Now, that list can serve as a checklist during code inspection. So, in code inspection what is required is a checklist which the evaluators will use and see whether the items in the checklists are being addressed in the code or not. This is conceptually similar to the heuristic evaluation that we have discussed earlier. So, what are these common errors? Let us see some examples. One very common error is use of uninitialized variables. Probably many of you have faced this. While writing a program, we often declare variables, but then we forget to initialize it. So, that is one very common type of errors that is found across codes and in a checklist that can be used during code inspection. If we keep such errors, in the list, then we can check whether in the code that we are evaluating such type of errors are occurring or not. Another common errors, another common error is jumps into loops. This is also quite common and checking against it is required during inspection. Often we forget to terminate a loop. In fact, often we forget to give proper termination conditions. That is again quite common, maybe many of you have faced this issue. So, keeping it in the checklist helps while going for code inspection. Then incompatible assignments. So, we assign 
something to something where their types mismatch. That is again quite common, many of us faced it while we are writing our programs. This is not necessarily due to our ignorance, rather many a times we commit this error due to oversight. So, keeping it in the checklist helps. Improper storage allocation and deallocation is another common errors which we should be aware of while testing a code. Use of incorrect logical operators, yet another common error that we should be aware of while testing our code. A very common thing is use of incorrect precedence among operators. So, often we do not pay attention to the precedence of operators and we use them in very incorrect way which creates logical errors in the code. So, we should avoid that. So, checking against such type of incorrect usage helps in keeping the code clean. Improper modification of loop variables, another common error. We often make this mistake and it is preferable to check against it in your code testing. So, that is in summary what we can do during code inspection. Now, few things you should remember. One is like code walkthrough, code inspection also should be performed by a team, again consisting of 3 to 5 members. Each member is given the checklist and each member checks the code against the items in the list and then generates a report. Again, there can be a meeting like code walkthrough at the end of the evaluation. In the meeting, coders can be present or rather should be present where all these findings are to be discussed. Here again, the discussion should focus primarily on identification of errors rather than how to solve it. So, all the guidelines that we have covered in code walkthrough applies in code inspection as well. So, just to summarize, in review based methods, we follow either walkthrough or inspection method. Each of these methods has its own objective. In case of walkthrough, objective is to identify most important logical errors. In case of inspection, the objective is to identify some common type of errors that may happen as well as whether the code is following coding standards. Whether we will be able to identify common logical errors in code walkthrough depends on how the test cases are chosen. If they are representative test cases, then it is more likely that during walkthrough most important logical errors can be found out. Now, in walkthrough what happens is that the evaluators executes the code by hand. So, essentially traces the steps or the statements that are part of the code one by one for a given input and at the end calculates the output that should be outputted by the code and matches with the actual output to see if there is any problem or not. In inspection, no execution is required, hand execution is required, rather the evaluator simply goes through the code and sees whether common errors are present such as uninitialized variables, improper assignments, improper termination and so on. For these errors, to identify these errors, no execution is required. Also, while going through the code, the evaluators look for violation of coding standards such as improper naming conventions and improper function lengths, use of too many global variables. In a nutshell, whatever we discussed in our earlier lectures about good coding practices, those things are also observed while a member of the evaluation team goes through the code in code inspection method. In both the cases, at the end each member produces a report, those reports are compiled and a meeting is organized where coders are present. In the meeting, all these reports are discussed to identify errors. 
Now the focus of the meeting should be to identify errors rather than to take care of the errors. That is about code review. Later on we will see one case study on how to create a code review document. I hope you have enjoyed the material, you have learned about the basic concepts of code review and you will be able to actually review a code and create a document. In the next lecture, we will see how to create such a document. The material that I covered today can be found in these books, Fundamentals of Software Engineering, Chapter 10 as well as Software Engineering, A Practitioner's Approach, Chapters 19 to 21. You will find more details than what I covered, but it is always good to go through things in more details. That is all for this lecture. Looking forward to see you all in the next lecture. Thank you and goodbye.